Hello everyone and welcome to this unboxing. In this one we're going to be checking out Rubicon's Bell UH-1D Huey. Uh, this uh, model has a lot of options in, in there. It's uh, very highly detailed. There's plenty of things to get stuck into and a lot of um, making sure you read the instructions as well. I explain a little bit further when we get down to the table. There's a lot of variants. There's a lot of history behind this. It's one of the most iconic aircraft in my opinion, next to the likes of the Spitfire, the B-17, um, maybe some of the fast jets as well later on, like the, the uh, Sabre and stuff like that. But this, when anyone says Vietnam, it's the Huey. So without further ado, I've been looking forward in, to getting into this kit. Let's get down to the table and unbox it and see what it looks like. So to start off, we're going to look at the decal sheet for our Huey. Lots and lots of options here, tons of different versions of different types of markings. We have US Army, we have the Marines and the Navy there as well. We have Australian, all sorts of stuff in here. We have our decals for the medevac. Uh, we have different regimental and divisional symbols. I'm particularly eyeing up the uh, 7th Cavalry because I have a feeling I'm going to do this one up as 7th Cav uh, just because I love We Were, we were Soldiers. Uh, absolute ton of stuff down here and the nice part is we have the instrument panels as well down here at the bottom so the instrument panels you will see later on uh, in the unboxing they do come with molded detail on them but putting the transfer over them is just going to save a lot of time especially if you have a little bit of a decal softener and that should settle down over the instrument panel and look quite good so we'll move that to the side now we're going to look at the instruction manual because this is very comprehensive it shows five versions on the front you are going to have to read this carefully because there are so many options in here for weapon loadouts and so on you want to make sure you're doing everything correctly so very traditional sort of instruction manual 2d drawings all showing the the components going together this is where when i come to build this where i'm going to be figuring out my sub assemblies so i have a feeling that as it says here this is basically going to be sub-assembly, so one, two, maybe this with the tail on it might be one single sub-assembly because it allows you to get in and work on internal details when you come to paint it. So they're doing this the right way, I think, here because we've got our instrument panels up here in the nose. We can sort the nose and all everything out. Again, we have options there for whichever version we want to use. Uh, we can also work on the internal details here as well as the internal details on the inside of the, the body of the aircraft. We've also got our door gunners, uh, which, you know, again, depending on what version you want to go for, you've got three door gunners uh, per side, three options per side. Then you have all your weapons. So you have the mini guns, the M60s, 50 cals, that sort of thing. Um, different interior loadouts as well, depending on if you're going for mini guns or if you're going for medevac or just your standard troop carrier they've all got different internal layouts so again reading this carefully is going to help you and make this build a lot more a lot less painful than it could be if you go into it blind so plenty of things to look at here and then it shows you a further eight different variations of the helicopter with loadouts i have a feeling you want to study this picture first and figure out what loadout you want the best and then just try and follow the instructions aiming towards this end point. I think that's the way to do it. We've also got a layout of the sprues which have all the corresponding numbers on there as well and a little bit of color at the back. On to our sprues. Our first one is our clear plastic for our canopies, our doors, uh, for the nose. This is probably some of the cleaner clear plastic I've seen in a model kit in quite a while no, not necessarily in a, in a wargaming kit because wargaming kits don't really care about clear plastic details that much but this even from a scale modeling perspective is some very nicely molded clear plastic so a little bit of polish on those will make those look really good they're already very nice on their transparency already next up we have door gun weapons uh, and some of the internal layout parts. We have uh, mounting points for the side weapons. We have our minigun pods, bits for our rocket pods, our door gun miniguns, and uh, 
yeah, this is, again, a lot of this is going to make sense after it's been built, but this is basically the option sprue, or one of the, the major option sprues. Next up, we have more internals. We have our stretchers for the medevac, nice big stretchers. We have one of our instrument panels here, which has a lot of really tidy details on that. I think this is a blank one as well, in case you want to just use the, the transfer, which actually does make a lot more sense. Probably use that unless you're feeling particularly uh, adventurous and you want to make sure you do it in a particular way, then you can paint that one up. I like that they've included that. That's a really nice touch. We have our two pilot figures, uh, which have four head options. So we have aviator glasses on these ones, visor down, visor up. Uh, it's fine, nothing nothing wrong there. Part of the flight base as well, or fl the flight stand attachment, they've done this kit so that you can put this onto the base of the model and it'll attach to a stand of some sort. I don't know if they sell that yet or not, um, but it looks like to be a, a quite a good substantial looking piece. Tons of other details in here, like the seats and everything. There There is plenty to work at here and plenty to look at. Next sprue, more door gunner uh, related parts. So we have the options for the actual door gunners. Remember, this is 156 scale. This is true 156 rather than heroic 28, which is more or less this, but fatter. Um, I like the Rubicon are keeping that sort of true scale thing going on with that. And in general, it makes the kits look very good. Now, onto the main components of the fuselage for our Huey. We have our roof, belly, internal for the cockpit and crew compartment. The two nose uh, options, walls and floor. I think it's all walls actually, all that. And the base for our rotor, again, it's quite a substantial looking piece. I quite like that. Hopefully that's quite resilient. Um, if not, then you may have to look at other ways of constructing this to make sure that it's safe. Um, it looks like it just slots in instead of magnetizers like we'd be used to on the likes of Flames of War or Team Yankee kits. I like, the, I like slotting stuff in more than I do magnetizing because you can knock it and it'll still stay there. That's just a personal preference. And our last sprue is the rest of the body. So we have our doors, sides for the cockpit, obviously our tail, tail boom where our tail rotor goes, and we have the massive blades for the main rotor. These are huge very substantial pieces of plastic. This is what I'm saying. Hopefully that rotor assembly is nice and stable. Otherwise we're going to run into problems with this stuff just being quite heavy and a little bit cumbersome for the size and the amount of plastic that's used uh, in the construction. So at this point, I am going to take this kit away. I'm going to build it as best I can. I want to try and keep those sub-assemblies for painting. Um, so when we come back, some of it might be able to just fall off. Um, but I'll go ahead, build it, and see what we think. And here we are, we have the Huey built. Um, not entirely built because I've left all the uh, clear plastic stuff off. That's because I have this done, as I've said before, in a sub-assembly that allows me to dismantle the model uh, prior to painting. So tons of detail on this, absolutely amazing detail on this model. Um, as I've said in a previous one where I was unboxing their uh, King Tiger, this really is, uh, Rubicon really are a bridge between scale modeling and modeling for war games. Like this is upping the ante for the, the quality of detail that you get in a miniature for gaming. And you can see, if I can move it a bit closer here, we have our door gunner with our bench seats in the back, two more seats uh, in the reverse position to the pilot and co-pilot. We have our flight crew up in there too with our instrument panel. We have all the detail that we want. So how does this break down into sub-assembly for painting? Well, it's pretty simple. It breaks into two pieces. So the top will disconnect and the nose slides free, just like that. So now we have our two pieces ready for painting. So this gives us a chance to have a look, a closer look at the interior uh, of the helicopter. Our two figures for our pilot and co-pilot are excellent, very, very nice. The door gunners, I'm a little bit 
concerned because the door gunners, their facial details, their skin details are just a little bit soft. But uh, I've said that about Rubicon before. I think their their actual machines are fantastic. And I don't think um, crew detail matters so much when this is such a, a almost a centerpiece miniature for your collection in general. Uh, excellent detail throughout on this side. You can see I've put the flat, oh no, you can't see it there. Oh yes, well, this, the flat center console in the center of the cockpit, that's because I'm going to use the decals instead of the, the molded one. I like that option a lot. On this side, we have our flat instrument panel in there. We have another little set of dials, switches, and controls up here in the roof. It's basically all there. Like everything you want a Huey to have, it has in spades, and I absolutely love it. Not sure on the recessed detail for rivets, but again, I don't mind that so much because that's going to paint up very, very nicely, and those rivet details are going to be visible forever. How the uh, rotor attaches, this sleeve that you might have seen on the instruction manual, this is the sleeve that holds the whole assembly on. So this can still rotate. It rotates freely within itself and is firmly fixed to the inside of the roof uh, of the, the, the helicopter. So this may be a little fragile as you move on. I would say if you want to magnetize it, there's plenty of opportunity for you to do that or just make it in such a way that you can slot the rotor in and out. There's a little retaining ring in the bottom of the shaft. If you take that off, then this could just freely uh, be removable. So all in all, I think this is a brilliant entry and a long awaited and long anticipated kit from Rubicon. Certainly I've been waiting since they first announced that I really wanted to get my hands on this. And now I have. So I would like to go off and paint this. So I'm, that's why I have it in the sub assemblies. And I'm really glad to finally get my hands on this and just see what Rubicon took so long in their design process to do. I think they've done it very well. All the weapon options are fantastic looking, but I really wanted that traditional M60 door gunner that you know you see in nearly every uh, Vietnam movie. So I just wanted to represent that. And because I'm a fan of uh, We Were Soldiers, this is going to be painted up in 7th Cav. Absolutely going to be painted up in 7th Cav. Nice and simple, nothing too uh, mad there. The doors will be glued on last. So one other thing I want to talk about, I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin Glue to put this together and it seems to hold it rather well. However, I have some ABS um, poly cement coming. ABS is what's recommended on the instruction manual. So when I go, once, once I have this painted and I'm starting to reconstruct it, or even when I get my glue, I'm going to go over certain parts that are structurally important to the model with the ABS glue as well, just to make sure that this thing doesn't start falling apart on me later on down the line. However, the, the Tamiya Extra Thin does seem to activate the plastic, not in the same way it normally would with a, a standard model kit, but it still worked enough to get the, the sub-assemblies put together. So in general, I think this is going to be one of Rubicon's best kits of the year, um, you know, because well, it's probably going to be one of their best kits of all time, I would imagine, because this should prove to be a very popular buy for people that are just either wanting to do a scale model in a more unusual scale or for the war gamers that are going to be playing their Vietnam games as well, because Rubicon do have uh, Vietnam rules coming as well. And that's something else I'd like to see. Overall, I think this is a fantastic kit. Took about four hours to build to this point. Uh, obviously, it's going to take a little longer when we need to put the clear plastic stuff in, and then we go ahead and paint it. So that's my opinion. Over to yours. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.